we'll begin on the TV with Gary, Sky Sports News. Hi. We get some injury updates from you. I'll give you the names. No, you give me if that's all right. Uh, yeah, out out for a, a while still. Yeah, Cooley. No, I think it'll be a tight call for the season. To be fair, so he's working away. Um, bit impressed with him actually. He's a professional. He's doing his job very well. But unfortunately, the injury was a bit of a tough one. Um, Cucurella, probably another two weeks or so. Um, it was a two or three week injury when he first did it a week or so ago. Um, uh, Mason and Reese, you know. Kai Havertz is in contention for the game. He's he's trained. Um, anyone else? I just wondered if there's any update at all on what you said regarding Rhys James. No, no, still, same. Still speaking. Same, yeah. Um, is this a game for Oba, given you know his vintage? We'll see. I've got Oba, I've got Kai, I've got David Fofana. I'm obviously not going to divulge the team right here, but he's uh, he's fit and ready. Would the would the Arsenal connection come into your thoughts at all? Um. Uh, not really, not really. I think it's probably, um, uh, well, possibly, because I, I think you, we all think sometimes a player going back to their old club is, gives a certain motivation. Um, I haven't delved into that too much with Ober himself, but, so I'll, I'll pick that um, position on, uh, on feeling, my feeling of how they've trained and what the team structure looks like. Given the run that Arsenal have been on, particularly the last game, and this is a cliche question, but that won't surprise you from me, is it a good time to play them or are they, are they a winning team? Yeah, I, I think it could be either way, couldn't it? I think they've got, you know, very much in the hunt still to win the Premier League, and a uh, fantastic team who've had a great season. So, um, if they're wounded slightly, that could give a big reaction. If we can make things difficult for them, um, then of course that could feel different. So, uh, that, that one's a hard to, one to call. You say that they're still in the chase. In reality, do you think that they, they really are still in the shadow? Of course, it's the, there's enough games left for for the element of jeopardy to be there at the top end and the bottom end of the table. I would say so. I think um, uh, that they're fully in it. I think um, Manchester City has shown incredible form. I think we all respect that, but I think we also have to respect what Arsenal have done this year, and they'll believe they're still in it, and rightly so. It's Mayday. Is it going too far to say that Chelsea are coming distressed? Well, we're not in a, in a great moment, are we? But I think you know I've been able to live this now for a few weeks. And I also lived um, maybe 10 years of incredible success here and saw that continue and was part of it again and then saw it continue. Um, and I think it can be pretty normal if you look at history of all the top clubs in the league of, uh, of moments of tough periods. Our opponents tomorrow are a good example of that. They want to be challenging for Premier Leagues and they are again now. That's been a while for them. So I, I think we have to put perspective on it and understand that we've got to try and work on all aspects as a club. Um, to get back to the feeling and the position of where we want to be. And that's it's not a given in this league and there's a lot of work to do. I'm not going to ask whether you're happy because you're a winner, so you clearly won't be happy, but you still relish getting up in the morning and, and coming to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, uh, I was eyes open when I came into this job. I'm, I'm too experienced in football as a player and now as a coach to understand that things don't necessarily change overnight in terms of results and we've seen that. Our job is to work on performance and uh, mentality of the group, training, um, to try and bring back um, good feeling, firstly, but good feeling only comes with hard work, as I say. So I enjoy that challenge. I think it's, uh, again, I was very aware of the challenges coming in and uh, I'm very proud to manage the club. I love being here um, and I enjoy doing my job. And the reality of football is that your career will not be full of successes. People will always remember the successes but part of the job is the tougher moments, whether you're a manager or a player. Um, and you can't always control results, but you can control how you work every day. So I enjoy that aspect of it. Paul, PLP. You said, I think the other day, the players seem about 20% down on confidence. And you've just said about the, the great success you've, you've seen here over the years. Have you ever seen players here, a dressing room here, so low? Um, well, I think the, they're low on confidence and they're also low on performance, so I, I think I, I shouldn't distinguish that and make it all about confidence. I think, as I keep saying, you can only work to get a level of performance um, to then bring confidence back. I've been here in periods of the club where they have had confidence has been low um, because <clears throat> nobody likes losing games. Um, and I had moments here as a player where we, we dropped our standards as a collective and had to lift it 
fortunately in those periods when you look back over history we managed to get it back through hard work maybe level of the squad whatever at the time we changed manager a lot in some of those periods so it's certainly not one to um, try and compare generations or eras it's just different now you know in terms of the modern player the squad that we have here and what expectations are so um, the only thing we can do is what can consider the moment now and the future as a club um, and work very hard to get the squad where we want it and also to get the the players performing so that that confidence word is not like a big word I'm using in my press conference every week because a club like this you should work hard and the level of player it shouldn't be talking about team confidence but it's clearly an issue at the minute that needs to be addressed and it only gets stressed with self-responsibility in the first place throughout the, the, the club actually to then make it better. There was there was a moment at the, Brent, at the end of the Brentford game where as visiting fans do they, they directed some taunts at you. <coughs> which I'm sure you weren't aware of, but I thought it was very telling the way the Chelsea fans, as one, in a bad moment, they all essentially leapt to your defence, started singing your name and so on. And I wonder, even though you're clearly not enjoying the results and things, how much you've enjoyed that connection again? Yeah, I've enjoyed it, and that's very normal. I expect that from Brentford fans um, in a moment of good feeling for them. I said before and after the game, what a great story they've been in the Premier League, so I certainly won't... Um, uh, moan about that. I think they probably were just reminded by the Chelsea fans that this club's had a lot of success in the last 20 years and they're probably trying to work to their version of success. Um, obviously the Brentford game was at home, the game before against Real was at, was at home. I wonder how close, even though this next game's away, how close the, the first 60 minutes against Real is sort of a, a, a framework for what you could do at Arsenal. Yeah, I, I think... Um, Every game is different and gives different challenges tactically, so that's that will be different. But in terms of togetherness of a, of a group that connected on the pitch, the first 60 minutes against Madrid was very, very good other than the last bit. Um, so we have to try and find that last bit as well, but we have to be connected and show the same motivation through the team and energy because um, Arsenal are a fantastic team with very good players and a great team ethic, and that's what makes great teams. So we have to match that. To, as a as a start, as we did with Madrid in that period, um, to try and get a result. Um, just finally, for me, there's there's talk that because against City, Arsenal perhaps struggled a bit in the middle of midfield. Jorginho might come in. What are your memories of working with him? I like Georgie. He's a very very good player and uh, was part of the the team that went on to win the Champions League and a central figure in it. I think um, good personality in the dressing room to drive the team. A good player. And if he plays, he's just another good player in that squad. And that's the options that um, teams that are challenging for titles have. So sometimes you can change a player and not drop the level or in fact bring a different type of player in. And if that happens, then it's obviously something we've just got to deal with. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Last question in the broadcast section, Liam Twitney. Hi, Frank. Um, Arsenal have made a massive leap in performance this season with the youngest team in the league. Having had a bit of time to work with this squad now, um, particularly the younger players that are in the squad. Do you see the core of a group that can grow together over time and eventually reach that level as well? Well, I, I think it's interesting um, <clears throat> to compare the Arsenal story because I've, we, we all had a little insight into Arsenal, didn't we, in the, the Amazon series. And I think um, when you see what they're producing now, and myself as a football person, the interesting thing about watching the series and maybe seeing before that, I went up against Mikel when I was a Chelsea manager in that first year, was that there's a long process to sometimes get to where you want to get to. And if I remember playing against Mikel's teams in that early stage, which were sometimes five at the back, sometimes four, sometimes they build with a four and then they defend with a five and all these things. And now they have a very, very clear identity and they have a clear, through recruitment, a change of squad, pretty much team completely, other than maybe the players that have come through. And obviously you always need academy players to come through of a higher level when they've had that. But there's been a lot of work to that through Mikel, through the team, through alignment, through good recruitment. Um, and we, if we talk about it as just happening this season and it's come overnight, I think you have to go back to the beginning and all those tougher periods. So I think, do we have the possibility to do that? Yes. Will it take a lot of time and good decisions along the way? Absolutely, yes, um, that you can get there. But of course, those things have been a, probably a credit to Arsenal because I saw, and you remember the times when the manager was being questioned quite a few times, the owners were being questioned, the players were being questioned. Um, and that 
process can take two or three years, which it has done. And, you, and in, within that two or three years, you've got to make a lot of right decisions and keep working in a good way. And to be fair, from a coach's side, I think it's a great thing to see a club stick with a manager when maybe at another club, they may have changed manager two or three times. I think they're, they're a great example of, of that done well and a part of the answers to why they're where they are now, as, as I say, alongside good, very good coaching and good players.